Now let us consider the professional ethics for teaching. What is or ought to be the objective of teaching? Value-based input. The teacher needs her input to be full of values, to have relevance and significance beyond the curriculum. Life skills is the second most important thing. The student who is learning the program or who is being trained in a particular course needs to also get equipped with relevant life skills through the course. Employability. There are several skills that have been identified today by the professional potential employers in the private sector which they find missing in students and therefore the teacher needs to inculcate these employable skills also which are also called 21st century skills. Worldly wisdom is the next thing which teaching should incorporate. Learner background is something which the teacher has to consider. Disadvantaged groups, culturally demotivated learners. Teachers should be able to create a stimulating learning environment for these disparate groups and take into account present and future scope of teaching. Code of ethics and code of conduct is normally laid out by the institution, but they have some universal commonalities. So let's try to understand what these two things are. Now when we say code of ethics, code of ethics largely refers to decision making and code of conduct to action. Let us see an example of each. So an example of code of ethics would be, uh, say for instance, a teacher has a particular religious ideology or she favours a particular linguistic community. This favouritism or this bias, however, should not be reflected in her teaching. Keeping this bias out is an ethical choice and decision which is taken by the teacher. Refraining from gossip and ungainly conversation also, for instance, is a teacher's ethical choice. Now let's look at an example of code of conduct. A teacher simply does not comply with the organizational rules and comes late to class every day or makes her students do her personal work or she doesn't take lectures regula regularly. Here, she is violating the code of conduct. You will now be watching a clip from a film which perhaps you have seen earlier. Uh, and any guesses what the clip is going to be about? Well, you are right if you think it is going to show one such teacher-student interaction. As you watch the clip, you need to do a while observation task. You need to identify if the teacher violates any professional ethical code. So, which ethical code did the teacher violate? The teacher failed to treat the student as an equal. The teacher turned the environment into an intimidating and stifling environment. And the teacher used the student to his advantage. What is our takeaway from this clip? Think of some qualifiers or describing words for the teacher. Why do we find him offensive? Because he encroaches on the space, the privacy of students. He humiliates one of the boys and he accuses him of a wrongdoing he himself promptly proceeds to do. As in, he accuses Stanley of not getting his dabba or lunch and trying to eat from other people's lunch boxes. Whereas, once he has Stanley out of the way, he proceeds to eat out of the tiffins of the children. Here, he is breaking a code of conduct. Now, you might think that obviously I don't do anything like this. But we need to see this clip as a correlative or a metaphor for our actions. We need to reflect on all the occasions 
when we may have encroached on our students' private and personal space, presuming it is our right to do so, or when we may have unknowingly humiliated and consequently hurt a student. Sometimes when we reproach students or we, when we chastise students, we do not take into account their background, the circumstances that may have led or might be leading them to behave in a certain way. In this instance, Stanley does not get his dabba because he is an orphan and does not have a home or someone who can cook and pack lunch for him. We cater to that age group which is extremely sensitive and many a times we forget that we might be touching a sore point without knowing. We impact our students in ways that we sometimes ourselves cannot fathom. So ethics is also about this innate sense of good and bad which every human is normally and naturally endowed with or conscious of. There doesn't always have to be a book. Sometimes my inner self, the voice inside me can tell me if I'm doing the right thing. There can be occasions when my personal ethics might be in conflict with the institutional code of ethics. Let us watch this video to see some of the dilemmas, some of the ethical dilemmas which this person experiences because his personal principles are clashing with the organizational principles. Say what? Dear robot ethicist, Mr. Anderson pays me $6 an hour to mow his lawn. It usually takes me two hours, but last week I got it done 30 minutes faster. He already paid me in advance. Is it ethical for me to keep the money? From Amber. You're the paper's new ethics columnist? Okay, let's see your response. Dear Amber, ethical schmethical, just live in the moment. Best, Moby. Do you even know what ethics is? <sighs> Alright, how should I begin? If you've ever watched a nature video, you may have noticed that animals behave a little selfishly. They act on their urges without much regard for other creatures. People are a little different. We care about how our actions will affect others. But we are part of the animal kingdom, so we still struggle with selfish urges. We want stuff for ourselves, whether it's food and money, or more complex things like love and popularity. Can you imagine what would happen if everyone acted on these desires? Yep, total breakdown in society. Fortunately, we've evolved a sense of morality, or right and wrong. This sense guides us to believe in certain values. Lying is wrong, kindness is good, that sort of thing. Values, in turn, help us make ethical decisions, choices that we feel good about. So you can think of ethics as a set of guidelines for behaving morally. Well, let's take this first letter of yours. If you take $12 for mowing the lawn in 90 minutes, your wage will be $8 an hour. That's deceptive because you agreed to work for $6 an hour, and lying is morally wrong. Why? Well, our inner moral sense tells us it is. That's why so many ethical systems forbid it. Most religions and philosophies frown on dishonesty. And our legal codes prohibit certain kinds of lying, too. It's a crime to make false statements to the police or in a court of law. And if you're in business, it's illegal to make false claims to the public. It might help Amber to imagine herself in Mr. Anderson's place. No one likes being lied to. Mr. Anderson might not trust her to mow his lawn again if he finds out. Amber should admit that it only took 90 minutes to mow the lawn and offer to give $3 back. She might lose a couple bucks, but her reputation is more important than money. Anyway, that was an easy one. What else have you got? Dear Robot Ethicist, Yesterday, I caught my friend Steve cheating off my test. He's never done it before, and he begged me to keep it secret. If his parents find out, he'll be grounded for weeks. What should I do? From Anthony. Hmm. This one's a bit trickier. 
We know that cheating is wrong, and every school has rules against it. On the other hand, friendship carries its own ethical obligations. Friends should be loyal and try to help each other out. By telling your teacher, you'd be betraying Steve. Yep, it looks like we've got an ethical dilemma, a situation with no clear-cut right answer. It may seem silly, but making a list of arguments for each action can be super helpful. The school code prohibits cheating, and you can get in trouble if your teacher finds out. But your friend will fail the test and get grounded if you say something. Still, friendship cuts both ways. It wasn't fair for Steve to put you in this position. Hmm, there are definitely more reasons to speak up than stay quiet. Unfortunately, there is no formula for acting ethically. You have to judge by the individual situation. Ask yourself, what solution is fairest to all the people involved? Maybe you and Steve could go to your teacher together and tell her about the situation. Steve could ask for a makeup test or promise to do extra credit to keep his grades up. That way, he won't get away with cheating and you won't betray his trust. Nope, I was happy to help, but it wouldn't be ethical for me to answer all your letters. You're going to have to rely on your own moral compass for the rest of these. This explains so many things. So, there could be situations like this one, which you just saw in the video, which you might find yourself in. So, what do you do? Well, there is no one-size-fits-all kind of solution to this, right? So, perhaps a self-reflection task sheet mapped on the institutional code of ethics and code of conduct might help. But the long and short of it is that we need to monitor ourselves as teachers and we need to do a lot of consciousness raising because after all, to a very large extent, we are responsible for the lives we touch, shape and influence.